Let's talk about category indexes and what happens after the end of the practice tournaments in March. In Macomb Science Olympiad, all of our practice tournaments uh, tend to happen in March. And at the end of the day, your head coach will be given an envelope which has a bunch of score sheets and paperwork in it. And among those, uh, there's going to be about 10 zip grade forms. Uh, there's going to be some score sheets for other events, dedicated score sheets, and there's going to be scoring summaries for a couple events as well. So in this video, we're going to talk about specifically about the, the, uh, the zip grade forms and the category indexes um, that support them. Um, but so here's just before we move on to specifically that, here's an example. We've got a zip grade form. We've also got some of the other paperwork that's going to come in this package that's going to go to the head coach. So I'll, in a separate video, I'll talk about some of the, the details of these other score sheets. But for now, I'm going to set these aside, and we're not going to talk about these. Uh, so the zip grade form that your team's going to get back by itself, um, is you, you can't interpret much from it other than how well your students are uh, doing at uh, filling out the actual zip grade form. So let's let's uh, let's talk about some of the details of, of what um, what we provide at the tournament versus what you have in advance. So, for instance, if you go to our website and you print off a, a zip grade form, this is what you'll this is what you'll get. And uh, there are blanks on here that are not filled out um, in terms of the team name and the event name and the tournament name and the team number. Those are not filled out. Uh, the questions that your students are going to be filling out start here with number one, number two, number three, number four. Uh, all the, on this form, it happens to go to 84. We produce custom zip grade forms for every event. This one is for an event called Wands and Waving, which is not an event in the Macomb Science Olympiad program, but uh, wouldn't it be interesting if it were? Um, and in this case, uh, we've, I've arbitrarily defined this event as uh, ending at 84 questions. And we ended at 84 and don't leave more blanks for the team to try to cut down on the likelihood that students fill out a portion of the form that's not appropriate. Uh, one of the things that you ought to be training your kids to do uh, is to make sure that when they're starting the test that they start at the correct number. If it's a station-based event, there's always the likelihood or the, the high likelihood that they're starting at a question different than number one and you need to make sure that they, they understand that they might be starting at question nine or question 15 or something like that, and that that's where they need to start using the form. Other things that you can practice with your team is the, the quality of their, their skills in filling it out. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more here as well before we get to the, to the uh, topic of the category index. So anyways, so you can practice with a form like this. Uh, here's an example of what you'll be getting back after the practice tournament. You'll see that your team name is written here, the event that this, the, the particular students participated in, and the name of the tournament that you attended. Okay, and there's your team number down here. Notice all of these things are pre-printed, right? So this is not a situation where your students have to be able to fill this information in, but what is important is that they know their team number and that they're able to help the supervisor make the match because the supervisor is trying to give the correct form to your team. And especially if your team has both a primary and a second team, um, we can't tell the difference between them. And so your students are the only ones who can give us that advice. So we, we want to make sure that the correct team gets the correct form. Uh, so there's a few things on here I want to just point out as execution uh, issues for filling out a zip grade form. Um, obviously, the, you're trying, the kids are trying to fill in these bubbles and do a good job of staying sort of staying within the line. It's not crucial that they fill the bubble entirely in. Totally not necessary. So all these marks that are on here, these are quite fine. Uh, here's a couple places where um, no answer was given. If no answer is given, it, it won't be the correct answer. It'll be marked wrong by the system. Uh, another thing that you want to look out for is erasing. So when the students erase, um, we'd like, you'd like it to not leave a dark mark. So like this one's not too bad. This one's pretty marginal. Now the zip grade system that we use for scoring these does an amazingly good job at distinguishing I ran this through our system, and sure enough, it was able to distinguish between this being a real answer and this one not. But all the same, you need to train your kids on how to uh, make appropriate erasures on these forms. 
And so one thing I'll point out, so here's a, here's a helpful hint, is when you go to erase one of these marks, what happens is uh, by virtue of trying to erase the mark, you deposit lead on the back of the eraser. And so then if you go and try to erase something else, now you're making a, a mess. And so the kids ought to be paying attention to whether the eraser is clean. Some of the boundary of the paper is a great place to just rub that stuff off and start over and right? see if I can actually do it, right? Cleaning up that eraser before making a mark will improve the quality of your ability to then make, get the marks off. There's a helpful hint for you. Okay, uh, other things you want to avoid is marking more than one cell. Like, so for instance here, uh, this is starting to bl uh, bleed over into the next cell. There's a risk that that would be marked as uh, intended as an answer in D. Again, uh, our zip grade system for this particular case didn't mark it, didn't misgrade that, but it's it's a credit to the, the sophistication and ability of our zip grade scoring system. So, but you want to train your kids not to do that. Okay, but now at the end of the and the practice tournament, you're going to get this score, this back. And then now, of what value is this to your event team? So here's what I'm going to, the primary point of this video is at the end of the practice tournaments, we're going to publish what we call a category index for every event that uses a zip grade form. And on this, zip, on this category index is information for each question, so numbered down the side, what the correct answer was, the correct letter answer, how many points the event supervisor assigned to it, and the category of the question that was asked. So we don't release the actual questions that are being asked, but we do ask our supervisors to, to uh, create an appropriate category to their event and to distinguish between what the, the types of questions that are being asked um, uh, at the term. So this one, uh, this is a, the kind of a category index you would see at a station-based event, because you see there's sort of blocks of of categories on here, and each of the stations is probably dedicated to a questions of a certain variety or a certain level of difficulty, maybe. Um, and so, picking the right twig uh, is at a station here. We got spells 101, cores and finishes. These are all different topics that might be in a wands and waving uh, uh, event. So, what your once once we release these, so your 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 head coach is going to get an email from the tournament from Macomb Science Olympiad, which has all 10 of these category indexes uh, in an email, and they're gonna be released in the last week of March after the last practice tournament, okay? And so then what your, your event coaches will be able to do is they'll be able to use this index to be able to grade the, the, the zip grade form that, that was released at the end of the tournament. So in this case, A is the correct answer, B, D was the correct answer here, C is good, D is good, A, that would be the correct answer there. Let's see, I'm on question seven. C is good, eight is B, nine is A, 10 is C, 11 is D, 12 is D. Okay, so just looking at this and comparing it to the category index, the students missed a few questions along the way, but when they got to the topic of cores and finishes, it looks like they don't really maybe know what's uh, what the right answers are. And so this would be a good indication to an event coach to say, hey, that's a topic that my event team needs to spend more time on. Okay, so that's how you use this form uh, combined. Uh, that's how you use the category index combined with the zip grade forms that you already have. We will be releasing these uh, in the last week of March. So in addition to all these zip grade forms, there are other score sheets, but we'll, we'll talk about that on a, in a separate video.